hike in pump prices of petrol and diesel has called for the exploration of other options apart from dirty fossil fuel, such as CNG, LPG, biogas, and other renewables as solutions for a sustainable urban transportation and energy security in Nigeria. <laughs> Now, to embark on this energy transition, how can Nigeria leverage this opportunity? Joining me to discuss this is engineer Kunle Shonaike, CEO Automedics Limited. And that's it on. Now, Kunle, welcome to Plus Politics. I want to speak to something a bit scientific. Thank you for the opportunity. I guess you want to say. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. Don't be shy. Don't be shy. Talk to me. Okay, I'm ready to answer whatever question you are willing to ask. Okay then. We at the at his inaugural speech, the president mouth subsidy is gone. Forget about the fact that subsidy seems to be creeping in back into the Nigerian uh, energy situation as it is. But in the backdrop of this statement and the, the very, very nasty uh, hikes in the prices of uh, pump price of uh, petrol and, and diesel, the galloping inflation that that as uh, as uh, cost as we speak what are the alternatives particularly for those who run uh, vehicles and those who who run logistics uh, businesses what are the alternatives to petrol and and diesel Well, the, the only alternative we have right now that will ultimately save anybody in that space of commercialization of transportation or manufacturing that runs anything which we call high C, internal combustion engine, that runs on either diesel or petrol whether you run a generator or you run a very commercial vehicle, heavy duty commercial vehicle, the only way you can save money now is to convert to a CNG or a form of hybrid fuel system that you use both CNG, which is compressed natural gas, and the other uh, diesel fuel. That's the only way you can save money now because the so-called LPG, it's all, almost the same with the pump price of petrol, this, which is the liquefied petroleum gas, which we use at home. So the only way to save money right now is the CNG. But before we get into the nitty-gritty of uh, how to assess CNG stations for refueling, before we get into the details of uh, um, how to even understand what CNG is, many Nigerians may not understand what CNG is. Like you've stated earlier, internal combustion engine pretty much runs most, in most of our vehicles, in most of our energy, uh, uh, power generating uh, uh, plants or generators. And you are now saying affirmatively as an engineer, who is an expert in that area, that there is a way we can convert conventional internal combustion engines that use petrol and diesel to using CNG. Is that what you're saying? Oh, yes, def definitely. You can actually convert anything, it, not just uh, vehicles, not just our cars. You can convert your boat, your bike, your generator to CNG. Okay, cool. Uh, Anything that runs on internal combustion engine can, can be converted to CNG. 
what is the peculiar reason why you are, you are mentioning CNG at the expense of LPG? After all, LPG2 well, is a gaseous fueling alternative. And it's, re it's also relatively, yeah, also relatively to, cleaner it, than, than the conventional dirty fossil fuel like petrol and diesel. Uh, if you look at the name, one is LPG, which is liquefied. Liquefied. That means it's in, in a liquid form, pressurized, or petroleum gas. Liquefied petroleum gas. While the other one is compressed natural gas, there's two different things right now. But when you're looking at the cost, cost of installation is almost the same for the two, whether it's LPG or CNG. But one will save you more money. And I see people touting or making noise more about the LPG. And I use LPG at home for cooking. You know, we all use LPG at home. We all have gas cooker at home. That's what we use at home. And everybody that buys LPG now is also complaining. At a point, the price came down, but the price is almost close to the pump price of petrol also. About, and this is the more reason why I am laying emphasis on CNG. And it burns and runs cleaner, better than uh, LPG. Uh, what would be your response to the question? But it's not easy to get uh, CNG. You can just go to your street corner and get uh, LPG, uh, but getting CNG is a bit of... Um, uh, what would be your response to that? Yeah, yeah, my response to that is, yes, I know the government is touting that everything is going to be in place, and I've actually traveled the world. I just came back from Italy. I went to a company to talk to them about getting the kit, uh, collaborating with them, being their representative in Nigeria for CNG products. And one of the questions they posted, they, they asked me was, do you have the infrastructure to support CNG in Nigeria? I told them practically, it's more or less non-existence. In Lagos alone, which is the capital of automotive vehicles in Nigeria, I think we only have about four or six. In the Greater Lagos area? Is it enough? No. Yeah. In the Greater Lagos area, we only have about four. Uh, Kule, it's not enough. Uh, uh, Kule, uh, but even the before, government, yes. Even before we get to the challenges of... Um, of the availability or accessibility of refueling uh, with CNG uh, is inevitable at this juncture to speak to to speak to the fact that to convert many of our vehicles or indeed our power our generators we would need a, a an army an army of skilled technicians who can safely do the conversion? Are you, as a, as a known leader in the automotive mechatronics uh, training industry, what would be your take on the, the percentage of technicians out there who can do the conversion, especially safely? And what are the challenges to training people if th there is need for that? Well, to be honest with you, do we have a, do we have mechanics in Nigeria? Yeah, yes, we have more than enough. In terms of converting the CNG, Automatics is putting up a program to train artisans. And for anybody that knows Automatics, we have trained a couple of thousands of mechanics across the country, and we we mentor the two main organizations, which is Momtan and Nata when it comes to training. We've actually talked to them. We've been in contact with them. We're putting up a training together for them to train them. 
And this is just a two-day training that once they are certified and they have the requisite tools, any one of them, yes, they'll have to be satisfied I, because I, I, there's I know, going to I be know, a lot of safety I, issue involved. I know, I know, engineer, I, I think it's imperative to, to ask you emphatically. I had two-day training, two-day training. Yes. Are you saying yes. that is that simple to is that simple to know how to do the the auto gas conversion in vehicles? Is it that simple? It's not that simple, but if you are already a practicing mechanic, a I, practicing mechanic or somebody that has a tech technological or mechanical experience in terms of conversion can be trained in two days to do this and uh, uh, having the requisite tools i'm hearing that silent voice telling me you, you you really want to ask this gentleman if he has factored in the element of safety we are talking about gas here we are talking about any error yes. any yes. error in installation leading to ghastly accident uh, uh, and all these two have been factored in oh yes <laughs> all these has been factored in the two-day training about 60 percent of the training is going to be laying emphasis on on safety the rest the remaining 40 percent is just how to do the conversion you see the conversion it's not something that's, I mean, like I said, if you're a trained mechanic and you're already practicing, all you need is some tools to know where to place the uh, injectors, what we call the so-called injectors, where you are going to place them in the engine because there's going to be some modification done on any engine that you are going to convert to CNG. There will be some modification done on it. Uh, but, uh, Where some technical experience comes in is when you are going to be doing the the wiring, the electricals. You see, because mind you, most of the vehicles we that we we use today or we drive today on our roads are more or less computer on wheels. You have to integrate the computer that controls the CNG programming. To be able to talk to the existing computer in the vehicle, you have to be able to do the networking so that they are both able to talk to each other, so that they can work together. So it's not only and that's where the knowledge. So it's not only right, about uh, so it's not only about physical installation of hardware, but also synchronization of software. Oh yes. To oh, yes. oh yes. Oh yes. You are, definitely you have to do that because you have to. There, there's something we call calibration. You have to be able to calibrate this. And you know, when you are actually integrating the software, the computer for the CNG conversion into any vehicle, there's some programming involved that you actually have to log in online. With the manufacturer of the CNG conversion kit to be able to do, do the calibration. It's not something that you just CNG, I mean, LPG, an average Joe can do an LPG conversion. But when it comes to CNG, no. But in, there's some level of experience that's involved. But in the backdrop of this, uh, of this uh, submission you just made, how then, how then would uh, additional auto maintenance repair workers be able to play at this level of uh, not only physical installation but synchronization of software how then can an average mufu or taju well, on you know be able to be taught this in a period of just two days okay well this is where Nigerian, uh, I, I will uh, I put it. I, I, I'm talking about myself now, looking at my background, where I came from. 
I was born and raised in Moshi. I learned this trade. I started this trade on the street. So you're saying you're saying are very resourceful. You're saying they're not stupid. Properly mentored, they can yes. they can cut it and cut it well. Oh, oh yes. That's one thing I can guarantee you because I have trained a couple of technicians that are stack illiterate in the world of electric electronics and are able to use the tools, do everything called programming on any vehicle. And these are stack illiterate. Okay. Uh, this is where we have to wrap so, up. But before uh, we... we, 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 this, but, uh, we this, this is something that... Well, it's very innovative. Yes. Go ahead. Uh, time has not been quite friendly. We really have to wrap it up. But I guess uh, you must have a program to mentor these artisanal, uh, artisanal skilled workers to be able to annex the wonderful Oh, yes. We're, 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 we're putting a program together. We're putting a program together. Once we get, we put the date together, which it will be announced. If you guys will uh, invite us back, we'll be able to let the public know when the, uh, the date of the training. Let's, let, 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 let's kill it at this juncture for tonight. And that's it. On the show tonight. Thank you. Thank I you. I'm Bola Hoba. Have a good night.